Hello, in this video, we are going to cover how to fetch data from the internet. So this can be really useful if, for example, you're creating a social networking website, you have a database, you want to communicate with, you know, internet based services such as your database, get information about the user, about their feed, about their friends, etc, and put them on your application. Okay, so to do this, the first thing we need to do is add the HTTP package as a dependency. Go to the pubspec.yaml file and in the dependencies, what you want to do is say HTTP and for this you want to put latest underscore version and then you want to go to packages get. Oh, sorry, not latest version. Sorry, 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 sorry. You want to go to 0 0.12.0 0 plus one, but make sure you, you know, have the latest version that is currently available. And so, if we click packages, I'll get now, it should all work. And then he packages upgrade. And there we go. So to actually have a look at the packages, you want to go to pub dot dot lang dot org forward slash packages forward slash. Actually, no, I'll just do it like that. Then you can save search for HTTP and select that one. And in here, you get whatever the latest version is. This is the version we have: so zero point one two point zero plus. One. So that is it, and you know you, you can also have a look for so HTTP you know, install. There should be a little section for that as well. Okay, so we've got HTTP now all not that like the package all set up. Now you know to make a you know basically a network request. So let's actually handle all of that. So if we go to our application so main the dot you want to first of all import a few things we need to import package http as you can see this will now appear http dot semicolon we also need to import dot asynchronous and then we need to import dot Convert. This will be required just for the example that we are using. Okay, and we want to put this as HTTP so we can refer to it as HTTP anywhere in our application. And what we are going to do is create a method that's going to fetch a post from a website called JSON Placeholder. And it just allows us to get some information from there, but you can get it from your own server. That doesn't you know, really matter and so here we are going to say future it's going to be a future based event so it's, so essentially saying you know you know there will be a response but it, it could be sometime in the future it's going to be asynchronous host is not working simply because we have not created that class yet which we will be creating very soon so we want to final response equals await HTTP dot get and in here I'm gonna put the link which is https colon for slash for slash JSON place holder no golder holder dot type i code dot com for slash posts for slash one and next we're going to say if response dot status code is equal to 200 then that means it's been successful okay so we're getting something wrong with this let's have a static type of, type of bool oopsie daisy double equals so I didn't do the comparison. So return 
post dot from JSON. Obviously, bear with me. More will be, you know, revealed as we you know, write it and run it. Response dot body. And again, post will all be sorted when I implement that after this method. And here we'll just say throw exception fail to load the post. Try again later. So now let's create the class. So the class is going to be class post. And in here we're going to have a final int user ID. Obviously, depending on the JSON data that you are actually getting back. Mm, what's the same? Mm, yeah, that's fine. We, it's going to be initialized soon. Yeah, it'll be initialized with the constructor. Final int ID. Obviously, depending on the data you know that you're getting back, you can format essentially this class the way you want to. Final string title. Final string body. And so we're going to have a post constructor. This is same thing, it's going to be setting up the value. So this dot user ID, comma this dot ID, comma this dot title, comma this dot body. Okay, next we're going to say factory post dot from JSON. And in here, we need a map of the string and dynamic. So the key is dynamic and the value will be a dynamic type. So it could be any sort of data you want. JSON. And in here, we are going to return a post instance. And you know the user ID will essentially be the this JSON file that's you know that we've received and we'll get the user ID from it. User, I think it's like this. Obviously, depending on you know the name and the format, again, you know, you just suggest it. JSON ID title JSON title. Obviously, you could get image URL. You can get whatever you want. Um, no. I think we're basically ready to go. So we're ready to not implement it within our application. So if we go down and in here, we're going to add a child. This is going to be a future builder post. Mm, oops, I messed that up. Post like so. And then in here, we're going to have future, it's going to be post, and again, I keep adding extra stuff unnecessarily. And yeah, I don't know why that is not working, because I am missing the final future. So this will be the post that we are getting. It would help if I actually knew how to spell. Must be initialized. Why is this not initialized? Oh, yep. Let's just create the constructor. So we are going to say um, equals to fetch post. There we go. And now what we are going to say is builder context. Snapshot and why is that not working anymore? Why is snapshot keep everything missing stuff out? No, it's fine. It's fine. I haven't, you know, I haven't missed anything yet. Yeah, I haven't fully implemented it. Okay, so if snapshot dot so it's like there's actually some data. Good. And then we'll return text snapshot dot data dot title and I know when it's a colon. Else if 
snapshot has an error then we are going to return the error so return text so it is going to be the variable snapshot dot error and what we'll say is by default we'll show a circular progress indicator so that way you know something actually happening so let's actually run this and let's see what we get. Now let's see for sure. Let's have a look at this. Oop, there we go. Uh, missing a semicolon. Let me see it still run. We'll find out soon enough. Okay, so it's just running the Gradle test. It will be done shortly. Okay, still trying to do it. Going to retry the task. Maybe semicolon slowed it down for some reason. Should just realistically just give me an error if that's the case. So running the Gradle task, we should get on to building it soon. Built it, yeah. Should get on to installing the APK as well very soon. Okay. Yep, there we go. So that's the information that it's got from you know the internet so if we go here copy this go to our web browser type that in there we go as you can see as you can see if we was to have you know post number two the information would be you know slightly different so this is the information the title and um, Yep, we. Yep. So that is all the information from there. So that's really all there is, you know, that you need to know regarding. I don't know what sort of selection that was. Regarding fetching data from the internet. Obviously, you can you can construct this class the way you want to, depending on the data that you have, and depending on what you're returning. You can, this probably won't change a ridiculous amount, I guess. It'll be more this class than anything else. But if you have any more questions, feel free to pop me a message. And obviously, like, if I was to essentially, you know, let's say, just do a hot reload again. So you get that quick reload. And, you know, once it's got the data, and then you'll put it on. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.